Well, it's so good to see you here. It's good to be with my mighty companions. Yay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Those of you online watching on Facebook Live, I want to shoot a shout out to you. Thank you for tuning in to the Course in Miracles on Facebook Live. I'm Earl Purdy, and that ain't no jive. And we're gonna go deep into some truth today. We're gonna to talk about, for those of you who want to use your books, we're gonna do the Course in Miracles. We're gonna be on page 279 in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. Hmm. Chapter 14, The Teaching for Truth. Your function in the atonement. That means your function in the undoing of fear. Your function in the undoing of guilt. Your function in the undoing of separation. Mm. Wow. And in the course, It says you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it. Some of it's gonna be hard to believe, some of it's gonna be quite startling. You're not asked to judge it. He says if you use it, the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. Mm. If I use it, the ideas will show me that the ideas are true. I had some unexpected uh, dental work and uh, so I'm in pain but that's why I came so that I can see it differently you need the truth the most when you're most upset mm -hmm. you need the truth the most <clears throat> when you don't want to believe it and so what I've learned to do in 40 years of working with the course is to take any kind of physical anything that I go through as an opportunity to apply it. Because the temptation is to be all on top of it as long as you think things are going okay. And then the minute you have any kind of a challenge or upset, then temptation is to not focus on the truth at that time. So the part of me that creates any kind of pain or conflict for me what I've learned to do is to program it to know that that's when I'm going to dive into the truth the most. Because it's not like if I didn't have a toothache, toothache I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. It would just be something else. Mm -hmm. It's always something else. Yep. <laughs> it's always something else. That's it. You know, it's always if this were different, I'd be happy. If this were different, I'd be happy. If this were different, I'd be happy. If they were different, I'd be happy. If the circumstance was different, I'd be happy. If I get this job, I'll be happy. If I get this degree, I'll be happy. If I get that person, I'll be happy. If I get, if I get, if I get, if I get, I'll be happy. Anybody familiar with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have your form of something that's causing you a lack of peace? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, what I love about the Course in Miracles is that it gives me the, the correct perception of whatever I'm going through. Even though the explanation can be sometimes more of a trip than the problem I think I got. Sometimes the answer can be more frightening than the question. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, the court said that, that we are spiritual beings, that we are more than our physical bodies. And there's a part of us that doesn't believe that. A part of me that believes I am this body. And it says there are two ways that we convince ourselves that we are not 
beyond the body. We have a body. And it says the one of the main ways we do it is through joy, pleasure, and pain. So if I have pain, I must be one with this body because I'm experiencing pain. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now when I go through pain, it actually reminds me I'm not because I use the pain to remind myself of what the purpose of the pain is. And the minute I remember what the true purpose of the pain is, I just remember that I'm a spiritual being. Mm. Okay? So now, now, am I condemning the body? No. It's my communi com communication device. It's the way I'm talking to you right now. It's the way I'm reaching you right now. It's the way the Course says why while our ability to express love is so dim that we have to do it from one body to another body and through the body. So I'm using my body in a way that can help heal it by using my body for love. So I'm using my body to express truth. I'm using my body right now to express love. And so on this page, on 279, the first paragraph is saying, when you accept, first of all, don't let the Christian terminology of the Course in Miracles keep you from hearing what it's saying. When it says brother, it's talking about your equal. The man is joined with you, that we all join with each other. And the atonement is the undoing of guilt. It's just the undoing of fear. It isn't the traditional definition of atonement, of you making up for something horrible you are, or something horrible you've done. So, a lot of, and it's basically only talking about love or fear. So I like to take the course a sentence at a time because it doesn't make it, if, if you got one sentence and you used it consistently, you would have so many healings and so many miracles in your life that would blow your mind. So if you could walk away today and you remember one thing, you'd be amazed at the difference it would make. I also uh, realize that every week, whoever is sent, anybody that comes is sent. Anybody that's come, that's come to my classes for any period of time knows that you never know who's going to be here. There is absolutely no pattern in it whatsoever. You can be pulled into the, out there in the living room one week, and you come back the next week and there's nine people. Because it has nothing to do with numbers. It has to do with who's sent. So that means it's no accident that you're here. It's no accident that you're here. And it's not necessary for you to agree with anything that I'm saying from the course. Now I'll say that again. There is no attempt to convert anybody. Period. I'm too smart for that. <laughs> okay. It really. <laughs> mm. Because in 40 years of working with this material and working with literally thousands of people, there's two things I know about. There's one thing I know about the Course in Miracles. You're either ready for it or you're not. Yeah. That's it. That's There's no amount of talking and trying to convince a person that gets them to study the Course in Miracles. You know, some people, they only need to hear it one time, what I'm saying one time, and I never see them again, which is the vast majority of the people that come to my classes, <laughs> is that I see them one time and I never see them again. But that's what the Course in Miracles told me was going to happen. See, I realize that when I'm unhappy, it's just because I'm telling myself something other than the truth. Mm -hmm. And see, I just, after all these years, it's simple to me. I feel crappy, I'm seeing something wrong. That's it. And it has nothing to do with anybody else at all. Even if I feel like it does. Mm -hmm. Even if I tell myself it does. I'm too smart now to take all my power and give it to any person. Even if I'm acting like it's them. Because the Course also has taught me that I'm innocent, so I can have all the feelings I want to have about anything. So I also, I don't try to, I'm not trying to be nice. And since I was never successful in doing that consistently for anybody <laughs> anyway, that also made it easier. I'm not trying to be a nice person. I've given that up too, right? Why? Because it doesn't matter how I'm expressing myself up here. You all are going to see me the way you want to. I could be the nicest person in the world, but if you decided that you're not going to see me that way, 
there's nothing I can do that's going to change your mind. So I also don't really care that much about what other people think of me anymore either. Because I found out my relationships with people is pretty like pretty much like my relationship with the course. Either people like me or they don't. Either they appreciate me or they don't. And so I'm always working on me appreciating me. Because wherever I go, I'm there. <laughs> wherever I go, you aren't there. But wherever I go, I'm there, right? So you take the first sentence. It says, when you accept a brother's guiltlessness, you will see the atonement in him. What does that mean? When I see your innocence, that's when I see the love in you. That's when I see the truth in you. That's when I see the healing in you, which I think is just the opposite of everything that I was taught, because I don't know about you, but I was taught to believe in the sinfulness and the guilt of people. As a matter of fact, I was taught to believe if I saw myself as guilty, that made me a good person. And the more that I saw myself as guilty, the more I was innocent. Weird. So I thought being a good person was me to feel guilty about every free thing I did almost. Me too. So if I believe that guilt is salvation, then I'm going to have a vested interest in keeping me guilty and seeing everybody else is guilty too. So when I accept that you're innocent, I'm not talking about your personalities when I say I accept that you're innocent. I'm not talking about your personalities. I'm talking about who you really are, what you really are beyond your personalities, beyond what you learn to be. When I see that in you, the court says, then that's when I'll see the innocence in you. He says, for by proclaiming it in you, I make it mine. Okay, so I want to see myself as innocent. My, my logical mind would say, well, Earl, you just focus on seeing yourself as innocent all day. No, I'm open to seeing myself as innocent, getting rid of all guilt, but I'm going to do that by proclaiming it in you. So when I proclaim it in you, that's when I'll start seeing it in me. Now, the part of me that is guilty, that thinks it's guilty, it believes that's the opposite. It believes that by projecting my guilt into you, that's how I see myself as innocent. So you become the bad guy, I become the good guy. You become the person that has the problem, and I'm the one that doesn't have it. So in the world, he says, you will not see the symbol of your brother's guiltlessness shining within him while you still believe it's not there. I'm not going to see your innocence and your beauty as if I believe it's not there. So even if I don't see it, then I still have to recognize, well, first of all, if I don't believe you have any kind of innocence in you, I'm not going to see it. So I have to get that. I have to want to proclaim your innocence. And I'm going to say it again. I'm not talking about your behavior, and I'm not talking about your personality. I'm not talking about whether or not you have an injured dog on the side of the road. I'm not talking about whether or not you're the nicest person that gets up on the bus and gives somebody your seat. I'm talking about there's a, there is something about you that's beyond anything that I'm seeing on the outer that was created by God that is totally innocent, no matter what. Okay, so the Course says, your brother's guiltlessness is your atonement. So my healing is in learning how to go beyond what I perceive in you that tells me that you are not innocent. So I want to heal myself, and every time I go for the love and the guiltlessness in you, then that is allowing me to have my healing. But I won't pull that off if I'm focused on your personality and focused on your behavior necessary to what you say or do. I'm going to keep going back to that because that's going to become my justification for not seeing your innocence. So how do I look beyond insane behavior to get to the innocence in you? I have to reinterpret your insane behavior. I have to reinterpret how you're expressing yourself if it's so-called anger and guilt or attack or criticism or judgment or unkindness, and I see that, then I need a new interpretation of that in order to go beyond that. So I have to call your fear your call for love. I have to call your, what I perceive as your selfishness 
a call for love. Have to see what I perceive as your being not a caring person, a call for love. I've got to see those things, but I have to reinterpret those things different from the way I learned how to reinterpret it in the past. So it's not about me not reading the newspaper and then, uh, you know, I'm looking at somebody who was murdered. I'm not going to love the murderer. I'm going to love what's beyond that. The murderer is a call for love. It's a call for God. It's a call for help. It is the, it is the act of an insane mind that doesn't recognize the truth. So, it, so what I'm doing is I'm seeing it in such a way that will remind me of the truth, which will allow me to go beyond what I am perceiving as their act. So therefore I can get to that part of them that I can see as innocent. The Course in Miracles, it's like the Course in Miracles is only talking about changing our perception so that we can give ourselves peace of mind. And then when we get peace of mind, it says, then we can recognize the truth and hear the voice for God. It, the Course in Miracles is not a book on manifesting. The Course in Miracles is not a book on how to have a more successful career. Because if you're crazy, you have a career and still be crazy. In it. <laughs> if you're full of anger, guilt, and grievances, you'll get that job, and then you'll be criticizing your coworkers before two weeks pass by. If I'm full of anger, guilt, and grievances, <clears throat> I'll get that new house and be mad and full of anger, guilt, and grievances in the new house. Are you, are you, are, do you feel me? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, yeah. so it, it, those, who, those people who think that anything outside themselves in the world is going to make them happy are absolutely wrong-minded. That's not going to be what makes them happy. Now, either that's why it's easier to teach miserable people. <laughs> it's a person who's just come out of a horrendous relationship is much more likely to be willing to hear the truth than a person who thinks they're happy just because somebody's acting out their script. When, you're, when a person is unhappy, they'll go, there must be a better way, and they'll be more open to it. So it's not people who think that they're happy unless they're trying to remain conscious that's the easiest people to teach. And it's also not the people who are sort of unhappy. Because people who are sort of unhappy and sort of happy, the average person, uh, it's practically impossible to get them to do anything really to change anything. But it's either usually the people that's so in pain that they're going, I can't take this anymore. Or somebody that's so awake that they go, I know if I want to stay awake, I need to stay focused on the truth. Those are the two extremes you can use to reach. That's why the Course in Miracles, I don't believe, will ever be something that the masses study. Because it's saying everything the opposite to what the masses believe. The masses believe that it's all outside of themselves, so if you tell them that's not going to work, they don't want to hear that. If I'm convinced that making a million dollars a year is going to make me happy, and you tell me that I could make a million dollars a year and I wouldn't be happy, I'm not going to want to hear that because I've already decided what's going to make me happy, and I'm just, I want you to tell me how to do that. That's not the same as saying, I do not know, and I want to know the truth. Are you with me on this? Yes. Okay. Now, it says, grant that guiltlessness to your brother, and you'll see the truth of what you have acknowledged. Yet truth is offered first to be received, even as God gave the truth first to you. The first in time doesn't mean anything, but the first in eternity is the creator. So the first was the cause, and what we are looking at is the effect of the cause. We are the effect of God. We are the effect of love. We are the effect. See, if you are here, something thought you up. The smart being is going, how can I get in touch with what caused me? Whew. Not how can I make up what I think is going to make me happy. It's going, something called me. I want to get in touch with that joker fast. <laughs> <laughs> because what calls me is it can also cause that which fulfills me. 
Now, here's the cool part. You can, you, can, you can seek for your happiness in as many different ways as you like without being condemned. So I'm not another person that's sitting up here saying there's anything wrong with any of the things that you want to accomplish as your personal ambitions in the world. What I am saying is that unless you love yourself and you've gotten rid of the anger, guilt, and grievances and sense of separation from your source, whatever you manifest, you're not going to give yourself any true, lasting peace with it. I am saying that, <clears throat> okay? So I want my happiness not to depend on anything that's not available to me right now. Do you? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I am no longer interested in future happiness. I want to experience happiness now, yeah. today. Right now, in this moment, perfect. Right now, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Not after I meet that next incredible lover. Not after I get that. All, all this future. Mm -hmm. None of you deserve to be happy in the future. <laughs> you deserve to be happy now. You deserve to be happy now. Wanting to be happy in the future is wanting to be punished until you are happy at some point in the future. I'm talking slow so you can let it come in. Right? <laughs> so this will either, what I'm saying will either wake you up or it's going to knock you out. <laughs> okay, but you're safe. You're not far from the floor. If you fall, you'll probably be okay. Okay? <laughs> I, I went to hear the, the Pa Chopra one time, and the way he, the way he talks is, was like in a monotone with the Indian accent, mm -hmm. and I fell out in the aisle on the, doing this talk. <laughs> I passed out. <laughs> and so I knew whatever he was saying, some part of me really didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. So the Court says, we've used the whole world to cover the real cause of what it is we are experiencing. We're actually using our whole life. <clears throat> I love that line where he says, you're never upset for the reason you think. You know, so, so when someone tells me what they're upset about, the first conclusion that I come to is, it's not what they're really upset about. <laughs> it's the thing that they feel comfortable telling themselves that's what they're upset about. The deeper reason is underneath the reason they have made up, which is deep. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you think you're upset about and whatever area you think you're upset right now, I'd like to give you the great news of it's not the reason you're really upset. <laughs> it's really not. It's covering up the real reason you're really upset. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what the court says you're really upset about? Yes, yeah. please. Hmm? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, I, mean, I think I'm separate from that which created me. I think I'm separate from God. I think I'm separate from love. And guess what? I think I'm separate from you. That's the real reason why I'm upset. I am not aware of my connection to my source. Because if I knew I was connected to my source, I wouldn't be afraid and I wouldn't be upset. And if I knew I was connect, connected to my soul, I would not be upset about being upset. <laughs> so it doesn't mean I'll necessarily be smiling all the time. It means that even when I'm not smiling, I don't condemn myself for that either. Yeah. Follow me? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you could be angry without getting angry at yourself about being angry, do you know that the anger would just pass? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, all of that time you spend analyzing it and trying to figure it out, and it's like that's just helping it grow because you're giving it so much meaning. I feel angry. All my feelings are my feelings. And if I acknowledge that, and that's my call for love, it would pass. That's what I mean when I said I don't try to be nice. Why? Because just because I'm not nice doesn't mean that my creator has changed her mind about me. See, see, the thing about it is when you start to get 
that you are loved unconditionally, then your healing happens faster because you're not judging yourself for the things that are coming up to be purified and healed. See, how am I going to heal if every time a guilt comes up, I think that's a bad thing? Every time I get angry, I think that's a bad thing. Then I am judging my feelings, which just make it worse. Mm -hmm. But if I go, okay, I'm getting to the point now that I'm ready to let everything that makes me feel separate from love come up out of me to be healed and released, then I would have an entirely different interpretation of all my feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I would heal from any what I would call unhappy feeling or emotion faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you walk away today and you stop condemning yourself for feeling depressed, your depression will leave mm -hmm. yes. faster. <coughs> But either you're ready to let it go or you're not. Mm -hmm. What's cool about it, though, is you will. Eventually. You, you eventually will. Mm -hmm. You will reach your limit. Some of you are already at your limit. Yeah. And you're going, I'm not going to do that. I've had enough. I'm going to do it differently. So the book is saying, well, this is what, I, what you do. The first thing you want to do is understand that when I said first in time, he says it means nothing. But the first in eternity is God, the creator, who's first, first and one, beyond the first. There is no other. In other words, there is no order. There is no second. There is no third. There is just the first. There is just one cause, love. That's the only cause of everything. And being here, that can seem like that is not the truth. <laughs> so where are we then if love is the only cause and I'm in a world that it looks like is anything other than just love happening. You're looking at your school. Mm -hmm. You are looking at your school. Mm -hmm. You got up this morning in your school. This is your school. You're off at school. <laughs> this is earth school. <laughs> so if I'm going to learn how to love all of you all, then I have to be willing to look at everything that's in my mind that is not the love of you all. Because if I'm not willing to look at everything in my mind that's not the love of you all, I'm not willing to look at what's causing the fear that I'm looking at. So if you try to run away from looking at your own fearful, angry thoughts because you're trying to be positive, you're actually keeping those things going longer. That's why people who are so fixated on positive thinking without dealing with their underlying fears are always those people who are the nice people that there's always some type of catastrophe happening to. <laughs> you, know, you know those people? Oh, yeah. Are you one of those oh, people? Yeah. You're the nicest person in the world, but you got money problems, relationship problems, you're sick as hell, you feel lonely, but you're just such a nice person. You're mad as hell. <laughs> it's a lot of people you don't like, and you're hiding it under the blanket of positivity. And I'm not saying that there's not a place to be positive, but there's a difference between being positive and being in denial. Those are two different things. And again, even if I have hate, then if I'm willing to look at my hate, I can get rid of it. Your ego is going to say, if you never look at it, that's how you get rid of it, because what you focus your attention on, that's what you're going to have more of. The truth will tell you it's your purpose that determines how something's going to turn out. So if I'm looking at my hatred because my purpose is to go beyond it, that is not increasing my hatred. It's the purpose that has meaning, not just go making a blanket statement like, if you feel hatred, then that's the worst thing you can possibly do. You know, if I feel hatred, I can ask myself, how can I go beyond that? What would be another way to look at that hatred so it can disappear? And since I'm already feeling the hatred, I'll go with that. Because I already feel the hatred. It's not like I'm trying to not feel the hatred. I already feel the hatred. So I need another way to look at it because the Course in Miracles is only talking about your mind, your perception, the way you're seeing it. That is so much cooler. Mm -hmm. So it says, you who belong to the first cause, caused by the first cause, like unto the first cause, and part of the first cause, you are more than merely guiltless. You are more than innocent. You are more than merely guiltless. He says, what is the state of guiltlessness? What is the state of innocence? I keep talking about this innocence and guiltlessness. I'm not talking about feel guilty because you went out with somebody else besides your boyfriend. One day you realize there is no boyfriend. 
that there is only you, there's only God, there's only one of us. There's only one whatever this is. Mm -hmm. So there, you can't cheat on anybody because there isn't anybody else. There's only one. If there's only one, who are you cheating on? Yourself. And you're really not. Mm -hmm. The truth is you're not really even cheating on yourself. You're perceiving yourself as cheating on yourself. Mm -hmm. You're perceiving yourself as guilty. You're perceiving yourself as fearful. And what is that? It's all based on the idea that I'm separate from you and you're separate from me and then we're separate from this other person. Now, some people are not ready to go beyond that perception of themselves to the point that they're willing to recognize the inherent oneness of, 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 of all of us. So I'll never reach you in this class because you're not ready yet to perceive that you're more than just a person dealing with other people who are in competition with you in some way. That's a valid stage of growth. But then this will not have very much meaning. But it's not my job to reach anybody other than those who are ready to hear this. Right? Because you're not going to come back anyway if what I say has no relevance to you. Anyway. Anyway. And you know what's so cool? Is that the truth is going to reach you another way. It's going to come, it's going to take another route to get to you that may have nothing to do with this. But think about this. There are no accidents. You showed up here today. Those online that are watching on Facebook Live, there's no accident that they're watching. And my job is to, to deliver a message. But the difference between a messenger of God and a regular messenger is when the postman or woman comes to you and delivers a letter, nothing in that letter is for him or her. <laughs> when, the, when, a, when a teacher of God delivers a message, the message is for themselves first, and then they're passing it on. So this message, first and foremost, is for Earl Raj Purdy. That he's telling Earl Purdy, if I want to see innocence in myself, I better see it in you. It's telling me that to see it in you is going to allow me to have a healing, and there is no other cause but love. Love is the only thing that causes anything. Now, let me tell you something deep. If love is the only thing that's real, and it's permanent, and it can never end, then by definition, anything that is not based in love will not last. It will not last. Anything that's made without love will not last. So anything that doesn't last is what is not ultimately real love. So that old girlfriend that I think I didn't I don't love anymore, I never love. <laughs> you can't love me today and then tomorrow you don't love me anymore. That ain't happening. I can be special to you today and not be special to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But love never changes itself to expand. Yeah. And it's permanent and it's inclusive. Right. So in order for me to get to real love, I have to be willing to acknowledge what is not real love. Mm -hmm. That's the stage that most people bail because they find <laughs> out they are not loving. <laughs> and so it blows their theory that they're this loving person that's being treated so badly. The truth is, the first thing you recognize is you don't know how to love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you're mad. Because <laughs> they're not treating you the way you think you ought to be treated, as if it's their responsibility to do that more than it's your responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. Don't give me the responsibility of making you feel loved. No. I got enough to deal with. I'm trying to pay my master card. <laughs> 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 and I got the responsibility for, to make you feel loved. But if I see you as me, then I'm going to want to look for your innocence and I'm going to want to look for your guiltlessness and I'm going to want to look for the truth in you and I'm going to see everything you do other than that as your call for love and your call for innocence mm -hmm. and your call for guilt. The funny thing about it, every time I use my body to share the truth when I'm in any kind of pain, you know what happens? The pain goes away. Goes away. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel pain while I'm doing this. Yeah. After the class, I might be crumpled in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, that's why I can't stop. Even when, I can't stop. Even when the class is over. I still be trying to tell you for little stuff. And you won't be by yourself. And, and just the financial savings alone <laughs> will be worth it. So before I go to the next paragraph, any question or comment about what I said that was from the first paragraph? 
Yeah. Well, what keeps coming up to me is just in the Bible when Jesus kept saying, hey, everybody, have eyes to see through the actions mm -hmm. that are coming at you. Have mm -hmm. ears to hear. It's mm -hmm. a call for love. Mm -hmm. There's just love. You stay in love. That's your insurance policy. That's your protection. That's your protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, we, but I have to keep remembering that when it says love, it is not talking about the Person. definition of love that we use. Mm -hmm. The definition of love that we use is what? Specialness. Mm -hmm. It's ever changing. It's ever changing. What our definition of love is ever changing. Yeah. So if I know you don't know what love is, and I choose to get in a relationship with you, then it's easier for me to forgive you when you don't act loving. Mm -hmm. Because you're learning just like I'm learning. We are both learning to love. What does that mean? We're both learning how to let go of the blocks to love. That's all that means. Mm. I would never now, after all these years of being on my spiritual path, get in a relationship with anyone that would tell me I could only love them. I would avoid them like the plague. Because I know they don't know what love is. Now, we may say we'll only have sex with each other if that's what we think we need or whatever the kind of agreements we need to make at a bodily level. But no conscious being is going to tell you don't love anybody but me. Because a conscious being knows that the more love extends, the better it is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't even appreciate you until they have somebody to compare you with. So if I'm in a relationship with somebody, I don't like them to only extend to me because they'll forget how cool I am. <laughs> they'll start to take me for granted. They'll get to the point that they think somebody, because I'm I am I am a I am a really good partner. <laughs> I've been such a lousy one in my past that now I know how to be a really, really good one. So if I go out with somebody and they act like I'm an ordinary guy that they meet every day, even though I'm listening to them talk about the people that they have been in relationship with, and they don't see that I am a totally different, I'm being sane, I'm, I'm taking responsibility, I'm not trying to attack them, uh, I'm recognizing their innocence, and I'm telling them that they are, and what they're saying is a call for love, and I'm not trying to limit them, and I'm not trying to restrict them, and I'm supporting them in being who they are, and, they, and they're around me and they go, eh. I'm not going to stay in a relationship with you because you don't recognize love. But then the next thing I know, I see them with someone who is completely insane, who is mistreating them, judging them, condemning them, not giving them any attention, that that's the person that they're trying the best they can to fix and spend all their time with, then I am going to allow them to have that lesson. But I don't have to be a part of it. <laughs> No, no, I don't have to be a part of it because I love myself so much that I recognize that it's my divine right to be recognized and to recognize you. I want to see you as innocent. I don't want to see you as guilty. I don't want to see you as sinful. I don't want to see you as causing my pain. And I'm certainly not going to put up with all that so I can get your body. It is not that big of a gift. <laughs> there is not one body part you have that is not shared by millions of others yep. not one you can't name me one thing on your body that I can't find on millions of other ones I know it's not yours <laughs> it's not your lips there may be other lips but it's not mine you know, it's my lips see I'm going to give your lips all the meaning your lips have for me. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> I love when I ask for any comments from everybody and then I come in. <laughs> awesome. Anybody else? I really appreciate your using your tooth pain to Let's remind me specifically that pain is just a tactic to by, by the ego to think I'm a body. Right. And um, 
and I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. And I wanted to repeat it back, so I hold on to that. Okay. The purpose of pleasure and pain is to make you think you are a body only, which makes you forget the fact that you are uh, spirit, consciousness, and mind. Because of the pain makes you identify with my body. See, if I have pain, then I must be this thing that's in pain. But if I remember the purpose of the pain, it'll remind me I'm more than that. So being enlightened doesn't mean as long as I'm here, I may not experience any pain. It means I know how to look at the pain that I go through while I'm here. It seems like pleasure is trickier, though. It's the same thing. Well, I know it's the same. Oh, I love that you're saying. I, 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 elaborate on that before I respond. Well, because somehow I'm feeling good, so it's really easy to forget that I'm uh, not a body. And it's, it seems to have a lot of attraction. Pleasure. <laughs> Ooh, that feels good. Ooh. Oh, baby. Oh, that feels so good. See, the pleasure makes me identify with my body as much as the pain does. And since it's so pleasurable, then I won't try to change my mind about that. If it's pain, I want to change my mind about it. If it's pleasure, even though it's just as temporary, and I start to have fear of losing the pleasure. Right. You know, when I hear about billionaires, for instance, and all they want to do is focus on the next billion that they can get, then I recognize that that's the proof that your ego is the part of you that can never have enough. See, that also is a reflection of fear, too. So I'm not a person that's knocking money. It's just that I realize money is neutral. I'm going to either use it to make myself, give myself peace, or I'm going to use it to give myself conflict. I tell people often, in doing, I've been doing the Course in Miracles full time for 32 years. And the Course in Miracles taught me that if I will fulfill my function, I would be given what I need to stay. Um, so I have to always remember that everything that comes to me comes from God. Because God is the one consistent thing, but you always think the channels that things come to you through. Mm -hmm. But you can't depend on the channel, because if you do that, you have a bought relationship. And so therefore you will feel like you need to not be yourself so that you won't lose that source of income, for instance. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's only by me knowing I'm sustained by God that you will get an authentic expression of who I am because I'm not trying to manipulate you in any way to take care of me, so therefore I won't be my true self. Which explains why people are in relationships a lot of times that they're never honest with their partner. Because they think that without their partner, they could not make it. Mm -hmm. So therefore they've got to act in the way that they think is going to keep that person from leaving them. That's why people tend to be the most honest with you when they had enough of you, and they don't even care if you do. <laughs> then they'll say, well, let me tell you what I really think about you. <laughs> I really thought about going doing you. And you've done it, and it's been done to you. The minute that the person no longer has something to get from you, then they start telling you how they truly felt about whatever they did with you. Mm -hmm. So as I stand before you, I'm grateful for whatever you share or however you appreciate what I do. But by me not seeing you as my source, then I can have a much more honest expression with you. So the course, oh, you had your hand up, bro. I was just saying, um, confirming um, the same pleasure and pain. Yeah. I've been watching one documentary on a Netflix, scientifically, the same part of the brain interprets pleasure and pain. Mm -hmm. The same part lights up whenever mm -hmm. we're having pleasure and pain, so it's all the same. Mm -hmm. So when people hear pleasure and pain are the same, it kind of freaks them out. Mm -hmm. But they mean, what it means is it has the same purpose. Yeah. It has the same purpose. The Course says whatever has the same purpose is the same. So what makes us one is our shared purpose. Our bodies cannot all be joined in oneness. I tried that in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and after much research, <laughs> I'd like you to know <laughs> that no matter how many bodies you join with, you still won't feel oneness necessarily. <laughs> oh, God. Are you ready for a little bit more? Yeah. <clears throat> you who 
belong to the first cause, created by the first cause, unto the first cause. He says, uh, you are more than merely guiltless. The state of guiltlessness is only the condition in which what is not there has been removed from the disordered mind that thought it was there. What the heck does that mean? You will recognize your innocence when what is not there, your guilt, is removed from the disordered mind that thought it was. Okay? And he says, this state and only this state must you attain. So what is the state that I need to attain? The state of getting rid of the idea that I'm guilty and sinful. The worst thing you can believe is that you are a sinner. Thank you. <clears throat> now, I know that some people, that would be complete heresy. They would fight, they would be so mad that if I said you were not a sinner. And so, people who want to believe they are, now let them. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> if you want to believe that about yourself, that's okay. I had somebody write me a, a week or so ago and it kind of explained to me all why there wasn't any God and why I should admit that there is no God. That, I love the way it, it, it began with, you know, would you be humble enough to admit that there is no God? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, let me get your space. If you're watching me teach this, I got umpteen videos talking about God. So why would you even approach me by trying to get me to say there isn't? See, that, that's a call for God. That's a call for God. Yeah. There you go. Right. It, it's like, if you want to believe that, I honor your right to believe that. It's okay, because the thing of it is, you'll find out and I'll find out. Whatever the truth is, we'll find out. If, if there's no life after death, you, you, well, you won't even find that out because there won't be no you. <laughs> <laughs> but which thought gives you more peace? The idea that you're part of the eternal soul that lives on or that you're just a body that becomes worm food? And would love create you just to die, or would love create you to never die? If I loved you, would I ever want you to die? Mm -mm. If I loved you, would I ever want you to cease to exist? Mm -mm. No. So this even, it wouldn't even be the nature of love to want to destroy your existence. Yeah. Just because your body dies, that doesn't mean you die. Just because your body dies, that doesn't mean that you die. And if your body is the way to communicate, and now you're no longer in the thing that communicates, of course you can still be alive and nobody know it. Because the thing you use to communicate is no longer being activated. But that doesn't mean you don't exist. I don't pick up CBS right now because I don't have a TV in front of me to look at it, but it doesn't mean CBS network doesn't exist. Just because something is beyond your perception doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Everything that's real does lie beyond your perception. That's the definition of what's real is that it's beyond what you see. Because everything you see will end. Mm. Mm. Now, this issue of whether there's life after death becomes a much more important issue the older you get in the body. <laughs> <laughs> so now, everybody that I had when I was in high school has made a transition. They're my closest friends. So the idea of dealing with the idea of birth or death, where is there life after death, it's much more in my face than it's in somebody's face that's 30 or 40 years younger than me. It's sort of like when you're young and you're on this bridge and you don't see the other side of the bridge while you're young. So you're on the bridge, but you don't see the other side of the bridge. Then you get to a certain age and all of a sudden you go, what's that in the distance? <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to see what's on the other side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means that I need to learn a way, another way to look at age more so than spending all my time trying to make sure I don't age. Mm -hmm. I need to be asking for what is the wisdom of the age that my body is and what are the benefits of it than trying to spend all my time uh, criticizing it and judging it. So I'm looking at, I'm asking for another way to look at aging. Not how do I spend all my time trying to make sure I still look like I'm 20 years old. Because there's not one single thing that is born in time that is not going to end. You're like a leaf that fell off the tree and when you die, you hit the ground. <laughs> 
That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. But the tree lives on. So do you want to be the leaves that's getting ready to fall in the fall? Or do you want to identify with the tree that has the leaves every year? That's good. See, we identify with the leaves that's falling on the ground that had its three, three to six months where a conscious being is going, yeah, I'm the leaf, but I'm also the tree. So you will get to the part of you that is eternal by getting beyond the idea that you're guilty and sinful and separate. Because that's the only thing that's keeping you from knowing your eternal nature is what you've learned from the world. It's an unlearning. It's an undoing. And undoing is easier than doing. It doesn't take as long to unravel a ball of string than it does to unravel one. It does not take as long to demolish a building as it took to build it. So even though you may have a lot of thoughts that cause you pain, it doesn't take you as long to demolish those thoughts as it took for you to build those thoughts. Mm -hmm. yes. That is the yes. truth. But undoing is not as hard as doing. And the Course in Miracles and any truth teaching is more about undoing than it is about doing. Of course, you've already done enough. <laughs> you're, you're suffering from your doing. Mm -hmm. And you're suffering from your programming. Mm -hmm. And so let go of your programming is letting go of your fear. Finish this paragraph. I'm just trying to give you a few things to think about. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. Whatever is the truth is going to be true whether we believe it or not. The truth is not dependent on your belief. Your belief does. And guess what? As many different parts of myself that's sitting in this room, there will be as that many different perceptions and interpretations of what I'm saying in the Course. So I'm not sitting up here saying the way that I'm interpreting this or sharing this with you is the only way to look at it. It's not. You can always find something to disagree with about whatever I'm saying. But when you're with someone and you really want to connect, you might want to focus on what it is that you can join on, not what it is you can be separate about. The more you love yourself, whoever you're in a relationship with, be a friend or relative or mate, the more you focus on how are we the same, the more peace you're going to have in that relationship. That's right. Exactly. Not how are we different. We already have accomplished different. <laughs> it's kind of redundant to focus on being different. We've done different. We've done different. Now it's about how can we take our differences and then give those differences the same purpose, which is joining in unity and love, and then our differences become something that thrills us, and, it, it, and it's our uniqueness, and it really keeps us interested in each other because now, my unique way of allowing love to come through me will be enchanting to you. Because you're not, you know, the way Earl lets love come through him, you're never going to experience it the way it comes through Earl. That's why I don't deal with jealousy and all that stuff. He ain't going to meet nobody else like me. <laughs> I'm not going to meet anybody else exactly like you in the way you express. I'll never be bored with you unless you're trying to be what your program taught you to be and what the world taught you to be. But if you would dare be you, I'll be fascinated with you for the rest of my life. Because you're going to always express something I will never experience through anyone else but you exactly the way it comes through you. Doesn't mean I won't experience love. Does not mean that I'm not going to have other people in my life that are enchanting to me. But they'll never do it like you. So I don't have to be afraid. Mm. 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 So the Course in Miracles says, until you do, until you get to that point that you let go of any sense of anger, guilt, and grievance, and so therefore to be with someone that's always putting you down, judging you, condemning you, trying to make you feel guilty, the Course says, until you do attain the state of not looking at yourself as guilty and sinful, you will think that you are separate from God. So the reason why a person would think they're separate from love, excuse me, that <laughs> <laughs> I entertain you. <laughs> some people have entertainment. Some people that was, oh my God. 
<laughs> a spiritual teacher that moved his butt. I'm the worst spiritual teacher on earth for someone without a sense of humor and who has a lot of guilt about the body. I run you out of this room so fast it'll make your head swim. All right? Because I want to have a good time. I want to have fun people in my life. If I want to feel innocent, then I have to have an opportunity to see you as innocent and who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So the Court says, until you see yourself as innocent, you think you're separate from God, and then it says, you will, you can perhaps feel the presence of your creator love next to you. You might feel the presence of God. You might feel the presence of love even when you don't know that you're guiltless. He says, but you will not know you are one with God. You won't know that you are one with love as long as you believe you're guilty and sinful. So the easiest way to do that is to stop feeling guilty about feeling guilty, stop attacking yourself about feeling angry. It's about you not attacking yourself and seeing what you are expressing and if it's anything other than love as your call for help and your call for healing, your call for a new perception. I no longer trust my anger as giving me correct information. Does not mean I'm guilty for getting angry. The Course has just taught me that that's when my perception is most likely to be distorted is when I'm upset. Mm -hmm. So I tend not to want to trust decisions that I make when I'm upset. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that I'm upset means I'm not seeing something correctly because if I was really seeing that person, let's say that I'm no longer in a relationship with, for instance, correctly, then I would only feel gratitude. We learned as much as we could at this time, or maybe you didn't really perceive me as the way you should have perceived me, you chose out of it, then I'll get to a point that I'm grateful for what we learned together, and I'm also grateful that I'm no longer in a relationship with someone that does not perceive me correctly. <laughs> now, would that make me feel better? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. that's how you know it's the correct perception. Because it made you feel more peace. Mm. 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 So the Course says, this cannot be taught. Knowing that you're one with God, this cannot be taught. You are one with God. You are one with love. He says, learning applies only to the condition in which it happens of itself. So when you get to the point that you let go of all thoughts of your guilt and you being sinful and you shoot that at, you have that as a goal for yourself and you start out by wanting to see that in everyone around you and a healing relationship is the one where the purpose of the relationship is one that you see the innocence and the love with each other. Those are the relationships that help you achieve the state of mind of knowing your innocence which would therefore make you aware of the presence of God which is the presence of love inside of yourself when you're aware of the presence of love inside of yourself, you perceive it outside of yourself because everything on the outside is a reflection of what you're seeing on the inside. And that's how you allow yourself to know love and God and happiness in this world. Thank you for listening to this next with me. Yes, yes, yes. This is given to you for even being willing to entertain the idea that you're cooler than you thought you were. All right, so. Those of you online, so we're going to do the uh, love offering right now. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. You're innocent, whether you share financially or not. But I want to thank you if you do. Those of you online, if you'd like to feel led and move to, and you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, Earl Purdy dot com, P-U-R-D-Y, or you can use Venmo, which is my, uses my email address, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, and uh, if you're ready to do some deep work, and I've also had over 40 years experience as an astrologer and a numerologist also, which is another way for us to be communicated with by spirit. Mm -hmm. The Course in Miracles says there is nothing you have made, nothing you have made, there's no skill that you have, there's no talent that you have, there's nothing that you are doing or have learned to do that cannot be used by spirit as a tool for awakening. So just because I got into the Course 
does not mean I can't do astrology anymore, numerology anymore, or any kind of anything I do anymore, play music anymore. There's nothing. Now I know how to use everything I've learned. It doesn't mean, now I'm into the truth, I'm going to drop everything that I have learned and I'm not going to use it anymore because it's just an illusion. That is a very incorrect perception. <laughs> it's no accident you learn to do whatever you learn to do. It's no accident that you got the interest that you have. And that's what I loved about when I got into astrology was it became an easy way to see what the blueprint, what the, what the intentions of my soul were to, in coming here in the first place. Now, why, that question, why am I here? Well, I'm here to forgive. I'm here to wake up. What kind of car am I driving on this trip? That's what my chart told me. This is the car I'm driving. I need to be a good driver and drive it off the cliff. <laughs> I'm not a good driver and drive it off the cliff. Or I can be a good driver and use that car to take me to a de destination. So every skill that you have, everything that you learn can be used for your awakening. It can be used for your peace. So if you like to have a session with me, just go to my website. It's called a clarity session. It explains in detail what I do, and you'll know whether you want to do that, and you can self-book a time right there online to do that. So many things I watch people spend so many years trying to figure out that through that chart, I could tell them in an hour. And you were saying they would have gone years and years and years. I've worked with parents with their children and they're just freaked out at how much easier it is for them to relate to their children after I, they work with me. It's a lot easier to get a child who has a, a natural inclination toward music to do that if you put them in a music class as opposed to a business class, right? It's like if you move somebody in the direction of their natural inclination, they're less likely to rebel and fight you all the time. And that same thing is true. If I'm, in a, if I'm in a relationship with somebody and they're accepting me for who I am, why would I want to not be in that relationship? But if I'm in a relationship and they're always trying to tweak me, you know, I'm 80% cool, they just got 20% dirty that needs to change, and then they'll be okay. I know that's not for me. That's not saying that I, don't, I couldn't listen to somebody in terms of some things that I might need to take a look at in myself. I'm not saying that's the difference between trying to improve on something and then trying to totally change something just to fulfill your fantasy, whether that's natural for that person or not. And most people look at relationships as something to fulfill their fantasies. Mm -hmm. I have a fantasy for what you should be like in order to make me happy. And I'm upset with you because you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what all anger is according to the courts. It is, you're not acting out my script. 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 So guess what? Somebody sent to you by the universe, somebody sent to you by spirit, the way you are would be what they needed. They would be needing someone with your expression. So instead of trying to limit you, they would be blessed by you. And that's what they would be telling me. How much I appreciate you, how awesome you are, how much you help me. What a blessing you are in my life. So if you're not hearing that, you might want to reconsider whether or not that should be your friend, your lover, your partner. Unless you believe it too, and then you attract it to them, you can't get away from them because they're just reflecting back to you what you believe about yourself anyway. If I believe I don't deserve love, if somebody's mistreating me, I will stick in that relationship because they're giving me what I think I deserve. And then I wonder why I can't get away from it. Well, it's hard to get away from somebody who's witnessing to what you're believing about yourself anyway. But if you find yourself always running away from the people who are kind and loving, and you're suspicious of them, that's you saying, I don't think I deserve love. So someone is being loving, that's the person I fear the most. Because the Course says, our biggest fear is the fear of love, which is the fear of God. You want to know what people are really afraid of? He said, you think you're afraid of separation? He said, you're not afraid of being separate. You love to be separate. He says, what you're really afraid of is joining. You know, you're, you're much, most people would be much more afraid to go walk up to somebody in this class and connect with them than they would be to be separate and just never say anything to anybody. It's joining. 
But guess what? We are joined. We are already joined. We're just recognizing what already is. And the truth is, you are innocent and guiltless. Thank you. You deserve love. You deserve support. You deserve acknowledgement. You are priceless treasure. You are a priceless treasure. Priceless treasure. You are a blessing beyond your wildest imagination. You are loved whether you believe it or not. Because guess what? If it's the truth, it's true whether you believe it or not. So what would be the advantage of believing it? If you believe it, then you'll accept it. And you'll accept it as true. So then you will see it and you will perceive it. So that's why you want to do it. I love you. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you the next time. Thank you. Next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you online, my mighty companions. You are awesome.